Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. Last time, we made it through the second class cabin with June, Santa, and Lotus. Yeah, we started a new game. And we're trying out a different fork in the road. So today we see what lies after the second class cabin. They step through the door to find themselves in a wide hallway. Did I just... Do something to my mic. Okay, no, all right. Junpei, June, Lotus, and Santa stopped for a moment and looked at their surroundings. A short distance away, a metal grate extended across the width of the hallway. They took hold and shook, but it refused to move. Nearby was a pair of elevators. It took only a few button presses to determine that the elevators would not respond to their efforts. They could only assume the elevators were not powered. There was only one door left. Well, it looks like we don't have any choice. Yeah! Sure does. Well then, let's open it. Junpei grabbed hold of the knob and quietly pushed the door open. He entered slowly, trying to take in as much of his surroundings as he could. The others followed shortly. Oh, so it's a kitchen. Santa did not look pleased. What were you expecting? Isn't it obvious? The exit. I was hoping this would be the way out of here. Huh, you really think it'd be that easy? Yeah, yeah, I know. Still. As they talked, Lotus headed deeper into the room. Until at last, she stood in front of a door. If we can just get through this door, we should come out on the other side of that grate we saw earlier. But, don't we need a key for that? Sorry, I guess that wasn't very constructive. Neither Junpei nor Lotus looked terribly happy. Junpei dug the ship map from his pocket and spread it out in front of him. As he did... Hey! What's that? Huh? Oh yeah, I guess I forgot to tell you. I found this a little while ago. It's very important that you should tell them you found a freaking map. It's a map of the B-Deck. Before Junpei could finish, Lotus snatched the map away from him. She ran her finger across it, muttering to herself. I knew it. See? Look. Junpei did as he was told. Santa and June moved over to look at the map as well. See? We came in here. If we go out there, then we'll be on the other side of the grate. With her finger, Lotus traced a path on the map. She was right. Satisfied that she had been correct, Lotus folded the map and handed it back to Junpei. He took it and slid the valuable piece of paper back into his pocket. There's a card reader on the right side of the door. And that means the key card is somewhere in here, right? That seems the most likely. Alright, we know what we need to do then. Let's get moving. First off, I say we split up and look for clues. Okay. Alright. It's time to escape out of the kitchen. Don't know why one would ever want to do that. I love the kitchen, but okay. A voucher. It says, Appetizer 9, Meat Dish 10, Soup A, Seafood Dish F. Those nine plates look pretty expensive. They're plates for appetizers. Remember, appetizers usually come on square plates. Okay, okay, well, excuse me, princess. Zelda CDI reference? Oh no, that would be the an- no, not the anime, the uh, cartoon. Yeah, where Link was horny all the time. 80s was a wild time. One, two, three, there's ten of them. You flip these over, they look like hats. The middle is super deep for a plate. They are soup plates. They're made that way so that the soup doesn't spill. If we ever get out of here, you should treat yourself to a nice dinner out. It makes you think a poor college student has the money to do something like that. Amen. I think there are 15 of these plates. I'm assuming they're for seafood. How the hell can you tell that? 
It looks just like any other plate from the 99 cent store. If you ever take a lady out to dinner, you're going to embarrass yourself. I feel sorry for June. What? 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 Why the hell are you bringing up June? A lady doth protest too much, me thinks. You are not terribly subtle. He, he's not at all. Serving table? Imagine food is put here after it's prepared so that the waiters and waitresses can take it out to the customers. But something doesn't seem right here. Why are there so many plates? There's a bunch of little wavy ridges on this plate. Those plates are for serving meat. Ugh, you really are ignorant, aren't you? Come on, it's not like I need to know this crap. Jeez. Countertop. Got a rolling pin and a colander. Nothing useful in other words. Okay, so there's like nothing here. That's the exit. This big old iron plate over the door. I don't think we can open it. Oop, teapot. Wow. This pot looks like it's made out of silver. I bet drinking tea from this pot would be really yummy. Spending the day off with June. Drinking tea? Does such a day ever happen for me? Jumpy? Oh, nothing. We don't really need hot water, so we should be moving on. Good lord, Junpei, keep it in your pants. It's a no! It's got a bunch of stuff written on it, but it doesn't look like a code or anything like that. Alright, well then. Um, that's a door. Okay, before I check any doors, I'll just keep, like, going around. A whetstone! A whetstone? What are you planning to do with that? Aw, oh, shit, don't tell me you're gonna try to smash open the card reader. Are you an idiot? If you do that, then we'll never get out of here. Oh. Yeah, I guess it would be bad, huh? This whetstone's only gonna be useful if I need to sharpen something. Mm hmm. A sink. It's still got water in it. There's a couple of plates in there, but I don't think they're gonna help us much. A countertop, rolling pin, and colander here. Nothing useful. I mean, I would take the um, rolling pin, but that's just me. Plates everywhere, okay. All right, well, we're gonna have to deal with that at some point. Now here's a pot and frying pan on a pressure cooker. I guess we could use some of those as weapons. What kind of an idiot are you? You gonna run around holding that thing while you're looking for the dead? Hey man, it was just a joke. Why so serious? All the references. All the references. Okay, so we got doors we can examine. Cheese! You know it's cheese because it says cheese. There are a number of cheeses lined up on the shelf. This is Gouda cheese. The most famous Dutch cheese. If you don't cut open the casing, it usually won't go bad. So you can store it at room temperature for quite a while. So we can eat this? Most likely. I'm not hungry at all. I guess it's hard to get hungry in a situation like this. Cheese on this shelf, sweet. Hey, there's something behind the cheese. You're right. Why don't we move some of the cheese? All right, guys, time to move it. June and I need to look behind you. There's a little green bottle back there. All right. Oh, look, cooking oil. You could probably use this to make something slippery. Okay, we got the cooking oil. And just a lot of cheese. Ooh. A rusty knife. I don't think we'll be able to use it while it's like this. The knife seemed important, Junpei thought, but it wasn't going to be much use the way it was. It's futile. Futile? You know, a waste, useless. Pointless? Oh. Um. Any particular reason you wanted to bring that up? 
Oh, no reason, really. I was just thinking about futility. She wasn't making much sense. Junpei tried rephrasing this question. Why were you thinking about futility? At last, she answered. Well, it has something to do with the Titanic. The Titanic. Yep. Have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? No, can't say I have. No, I haven't. What is it? In 1892, 14 years before the Titanic sank, a novel was published. It was called Futility. It was written by an American novelist named Morgan Robertson. The story was about a big cruise ship colliding with an iceberg and sinking. Of course, if that was the only similarity, there wouldn't be any reason to mention it. It wasn't, though. The name of the ship is Nationality, Course, Departure Time, Size, Displacement, Maximum Speed, Number of Passengers and Crew, the Number of Lifeboats, even the location of the accident itself, and the cause, and the location of the damage. Everything matches the Titanic almost exactly. Wait, just doing something on my end. There we go, okay. It was almost as if he'd seen the whole thing happen. But this book was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. But that's not all. It wasn't just futility that predicted the sinking of the Titanic. There were two other similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Stead. Both of them before the accident. One in 1886 and one in 1892. Stead wrote two stories that had striking similarities to the Titanic disaster. In one, two ships collided and many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats. In the other, a ship collided with an iceberg and sank. Hmm. I don't know, I mean, I'll give you that it seems a little weird, but... Pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day, or even other ships. Right. I knew you'd say that. But what if Stead had some sort of special powers? To be more specific, what if he had the ability to do automatic writing? What? Automatic writing? What are you... Oh, blah. Wait, are you... Are you talking about that thing where someone says they're possessed by a spirit? And then they write a bunch of stuff without knowing what they're writing? Yes. What do you mean, yes? That stuff's a load of bull. Okay, so let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. These guys... Oh. No, that's Junpei speaking. Uh, let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. These guys still couldn't have predicted the sinking of the Titanic. When this Stead dude wrote his thing, nobody had died on the Titanic yet. So if automatic writing is about being possessed by spirits of dead people, who the hell possessed him so he could write that stuff? That's not it. What's not it? Stead wasn't possessed by a spirit. He was doing the possessing. What are you smoking? William Thomas Stead was a passenger on the Titanic. He just wrote down what he saw with his own eyes. 20 years before it happened. He decided it was probably best to say nothing. What June was saying was insane and utterly absurd. If he tried to take what she was saying seriously, he'd go mad. Junpei smiled uncomfortably. Well... Uh, I mean, it wouldn't be automatic writing, then it would just be a premonition. A deadly premonition. Why don't we talk about this some other time, okay? Huh? But... Her voice trailed off and she glanced at the floor, troubled. Junpei tapped June gently on the shoulder and awkwardly reached around her to pick up the knife from the box. We're really in trouble. I know I'm just repeating myself, but this is really a futility moment. That blade is so rusty. Yeah, I know. Can't cut a damn thing with a knife like this. If we're going to cut anything, we probably have to sharpen the knife. Which, I got just the thing. The blade of the knife is getting sharper by the second. I should be able to cut something pretty good with this. Yeah. Oh, Junpei, what do you got there? 
a knife. No! Some stuff in here. A whole lot of cans. This is probably a pantry. Milk in here. Milk in an iron barrel. Judging by the rest, it's probably really old. Maybe we shouldn't open it up. I don't think it'd be a pretty sight. Yeah, don't, don't, don't drink old milk. It is not a good idea. At all. It's a bolt. And it's really rusty. Will this even open? We won't know till we try. Let's give it a shot. Alright, let's see if you're gonna come out. Damn. No dice. Oh, lube it up. Of course, maybe if I put some oil on it. Hey, just a little bit of oil, man. Come on. Come on, you little son of a bitch. Whoa. Ha, yes, gotcha, you, you little bastard. You did it, Jumpy. You're so smart. As Junpei walked into the room, a blast of cold air washed over him. Almost instinctively, he folded his arms tight across his chest, doing what he could to conserve body heat. Urgh, it's cold in here. What is this place? Uh, a freezer? Are you blind? It's a freezer! Santa's teeth had already begun to chatter. Hardly surprising. The freezer was far too cold for someone dressed as he was. Lotus, however, was in an even worse situation. You don't say. Oh, no way. That's way too cold for me. I'll freeze solid in seconds. Sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass on this one. I'm going to leave the rest to you. And with that, she ran out of the room. As Lotus left, June came in. Whoa, it's really cold in here. White puffs of steam hovered in front of their faces as they talked. June had already started to shiver. Hey, you don't need to be in here. You had a fever just a little bit ago. You should stay outside, we got this. No, I'm fine. My fever's gone now. But... Junpei had scarcely opened his mouth. When the thunderous sound of metal upon metal rang out from behind them. In unison, they spun around to find that the door they had only recently come through was closed. Junpei rushed to the door. Desperately, he grabbed hold of the doorknob. Ow. It was cold. Beyond cold. Merely touching it was painful. The doorknob had been frozen solid. They quickly deduced that the pipe next to the door had ruptured. Wait, what's going on here? Nothing, okay. Water released by the rupture had hit the door and frozen instantly. Santa shoved Junpei aside and pounded against the door. Hey, Lotus! You're out there, right? Open the door! She wasted no time in responding. What do you want? What's going on? The door won't open. Try opening it from that side. Please. Ugh, fine. If you say so. Hold on. Soon they could hear Lotus on the other side of the door. And the grunting ceased and they could hear light panting as if from exertion. It's no use. It won't budge. You've got more people in there. You figure it out. Wow. Rude. I mean, they're only going to die from hypothermia. God damn it. Santa was shaking like a newborn deer. June was hugging herself and was shivering violently. Even Junpei with the heaviest clothes of any of them was clearly feeling the cold. With every breath they took, they could feel the cold working its way deeper and deeper into their bodies. Uh, anyway, let's find a way out. If we don't get moving, we're going to be permanent residents. 
two heads are better than none. I'm sure we'll figure something out. Y yeah, y you're right. Let's just take a good look around this room, okay? Right. They pushed in close to one another and began to search. Okay. Um. Dry ice? Dry ice? Can't you make that stuff cause an explosion if you seal it in something that's airtight? Explode? Yeah, didn't you do that in school? You should never underestimate the power of expanding gas. I never did that in school. Junpei picked up the dry ice with the sleeves so as to avoid burning himself. Dry ice is just frozen carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, it is. I wonder how warm it has to get for it to turn back into gas again. Hell if I know. How's that going to help us anyway? Oh well, I figured we might be able to use it to get out of here. They were about to move on when June spoke up. Carbon dioxide sublimation point is... Minus 109 degrees. Any warmer than that, it'll turn into gas. Any lower and it becomes a solid. Junpei looked at her dumbfounded. Well, all because you didn't do good in Orgo, Junpei. How do you know that? <laughs> Despite my looks, I'm the clean... <clears throat> um, the queen of random knowledge. Looks bad to mess up when you're showing off. Argo mouth. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're so cold, your mouth's going numb? Yes. That's. That's white! <laughs> you're just doing that on purpose, aren't you? June giggled and did her best to hide her guilt. At least she was still feeling good enough to joke around, Junpei told himself. Come on, guys. Don't you think that's kind of weird? I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first. Santa was now shivering at an astounding rate. But his curiosity seemed unaffected. Junpei, however, was not in a mood to discuss science. <laughs> it did strike him as rather odd. Yes, as we're freezing to death. Let's think about organic chemistry. Nah, he wanted out of the freezer. Now. His patience was wearing thin. How the hell would I know? And how the hell is that going to help us get out of here? We don't have time for this crap. Actually... Junpei stopped mid-sitting, surprised by Jun's interjection. Under enough pressure, carbon dioxide will turn into a liquid. This isn't really a good time for a chat about science. But I was wondering the same thing. Wondering what? Wondering why carbon dioxide doesn't turn into a liquid unless it's under pressure. Right? It just seems weird. Water is a liquid between 32 degrees and 212 degrees. So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? Because it's not water. You you don't have the hydrogen aspect, you just have the carbon, but okay. H2O and CO2 are pretty similar. No, they're not! They're totally different substances! Yeah, especially since, you know, like, like I said, they both have oxygen, but there's two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen and water. And it's one part carbon, two part oxygen for carbon dioxide. Like, that's just, no. Look, guys, if we keep this up, we're just going to freeze to death. You good with that? You want to die talking about sublimation and gases? Because I sure as hell don't. He fixed both of them with a glare. Now let's get back to work. Assuming you don't want to end up like a pair of ice sculptures. Junpei turned around. The problem dealt with. Or so he thought. There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Its melting point is 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah. Well, you could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Water that freezes at 96 degrees. Ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. <laughs> nah, it's interesting, or it don't matter. 
it it really doesn't matter. We're dying here. It was strange, but no, Junpei told himself, it didn't matter. Their first concern needed to be leaving the freezer, or none of them would be around to ponder scientific quandaries for very long. He did his best to pretend he'd heard nothing and resumed his investigation of the room. Alrighty then. There's some frozen meat up there. Looks like pork. Huh? What's this? It looks like a tag or something. We got a chunk of pork. Jumpy, is there a slip of paper in that meat? I think there's something written on here, but I can't read it like this. If we try and pull it out, it'll probably rip. Need to defrost that. Don't think we're going to be doing that in this room. Alright, well we got pork. Dirty rope. It's a rope. But we could use it to attach something to something else, I suppose. Water bottle. A water bottle. Yes, it is. All right. This thing is covering something. It's frozen solid can't flip it over all right so tightly compact some frozen ice yeah I can do that because we got or not frozen ice dry ice combine it with the bottle all right um, no such thing Hey Junpei, didn't you find some dry ice earlier? Yeah. There's warm water coming out of that pipe. Warm water and dry ice. What do you think would happen if we put that stuff in a sealed container together? Oh, there's warm water. It's water dripping from this pipe. Hmm. Looks like when the pipe burst, the water hit the doorknob and froze it in place. This water actually seems almost warm. So put the bottle... Oh my god, I'm gonna dry ice into the water bottle. The dry ice is too big. But well, you gotta figure out a way to make it smaller then, don't you, genius? Hmm. Anything else? Alright, well, I'll take the frozen chicken. Frozen stiff. Oh my god. It's really hard as frozen stiff. Hey, June, can you say that again? Eh? Say it again. It's really hard. Again. It's really hard. The Thanks. Something wrong, Junpei? Your face is bright red. N nothing, I'm fine. If it's that hard, you can probably use it as a hammer. Yeah, good point. Maybe we can use it to break something. Good lord, Junpei. Good freaking lord. Alright, nothing else in there. Well then, let's combine the frozen chicken with the dry ice. I'm sitting over there like... Oh, I mean, we're only dying, but can you say it's really hard just over and over again? Alright, the dry ice is all in pieces now. Alright, and they combine it with that. To put these pieces of dry ice into the water bottle. Alright. And then. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna hook that bottle to the doorknob somehow. But I haven't put water in it yet. But fine. Let's just tie a rope on here. Water bottle bomb? Or was there water already in it? Okay, well, fine. Warm water dripped from the ruptured pipe near the door. Oh, because the water is right above the door, so we don't have to actually put it. Okay, fair enough. Not to mention, who knows how quick the reaction is. I mean, I've never done it, so I don't know. Alright. 
Junpei pulled out the water bottle filled with dry ice, let a good amount of water fall in, and then quickly sealed it up tight. The makeshift bond complete, he tied it to the doorknob as quickly as he could, managing the cold. Alright, that's set. So, uh, what do we do now? Just need to give it a little, uh, tap. The bottle's already about to pop. If we just throw a rock or something at it, it'll go off all on its own. A small rock. A small rock. Do I look down at the floor? Scattered across it were pieces of dry leftover f or dry ice left over from the larger chunk he'd crushed earlier. Alright, this ought to do the trick. He pulled his sleeve down over his hand to keep from getting burned and grabbed the chunk of dry ice. It was a pretty good size. About as big as a pool ball. He figured it would be just about the right size. Alright guys, stand back. Actually, we should probably hide somewhere. Both well, Santa and June looked at him with new concern. Where exactly do you expect us to hide, genius? There isn't really anywhere big enough. Yeah, there is. Look! Right here! We can hide in there. Jimmy pulled open the door to the small cellar. Come on! Get inside, quick! Santa and June nodded and jumped down into the hole. Junpei quickly followed. In his hand, he could feel the chill of the frozen carbon dioxide even through his sleeve. He tightened his grip, took aim, and prepared to throw. Alright, here it goes. Three, four, five... You're counting the wrong way. Oops. That is a really sad excuse for a joke, man. Sorry, dude. Alright, for real this time. You guys ready? Yes. Whenever you're ready. Just throw the damn thing. Alright, here I go. Three, two, one. Junpei threw the chunk of dry ice as hard as he could. With the same motion, he ducked down into the cellar with Santa and June just as... Junpei leapt up out of the cellar and ran to the door. Jumpy! The ice on the door! Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. The blast must have shattered it. Yes! Alright, let's see if it opens. Junpei grabbed the knob and pushed with all his might. The door gave way easily and all three of them tumbled out of the freezer at once. Hooray! We're out! June Relief collapsed onto the floor. Move! Santa shoved past June and ran straight to the grill, which he immediately grabbed. Ow. God damn it. Hot, 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 fuck! He proceeded to kick the grill in a futile but amusing fit of rage. But where was Lotus? It took Junpei only a moment to find her. She was sitting on the counter, idly scratching her chest. Yawn, welcome back. I was starting to get tired of waiting for you guys. With a great yawn, Lotus lowered herself off of the counter. Jinpei clenched his teeth and walked toward her. What were you doing? What do you mean, what was I doing? I was waiting. We were going to die. Oh yeah, but you didn't, so everything worked out alright, didn't it? What the hell? Just kidding. It might not look like it, but I was really worried. Don't give me that crap. I'm telling the truth. I mean, if you died, then I'd be in trouble too. If you died, then I'd be stuck here and I'd die too. See? I did all I could. I even looked around to see if there was anything I could use to pry open the door. But I couldn't find anything. So all I could do was wait. I mean, what else did you want me to do? Call the cops? It was true that there wasn't much he could have done, but something about her tone. Junpei gritted his teeth. Fine. But there's one thing I have to ask you. What's that? You didn't close the door. Did you? 
W what You think I closed the door on you? Why would I do something like that? It closed on its own. I told you before, if you die, then I die too. She was right, and Junpei knew it. Without them, she'd be in very serious... Very serious trouble. It seemed that an accident was the only explanation for the door's closure. If Lotus had really wanted to kill them, all she would have had to do was bar the door from the outside. And she hadn't. Well, she hadn't done anything. The most she was guilty of was laziness, or negligence, not attempted murder. Junpei swallowed his anger and did his best to apologize. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. Hmm. Oh, yes, well that's alright. As long as you understand. Lotus looked away and twirled her hair between her fingertips. His vengeance against the grill complete, Santa swaggered back toward Junpei and Lotus. Hey, no more screwing around, you two. Break time's over. Especially for you, lady. You've just been sitting on that fat ass of yours while we were freezing to death. How rude. I was plenty busy. Yeah, yeah, how about you put all that energy into something besides bitching? Let's go. Anger. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. We're not. No. No. We searched the whole damn place. We put our lives on the line, man. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. I don't need to go back there. It was a mistake. Now, where is that grill? Because I got meat. Is that the grill? It's only a partition. Nothing else worth noting here. On the top of the stove, there are some ingredients around here. I could cook something up for us. Lotus, you can actually cook? Who the hell do you think I am? You better believe I know how to boil hot water and put in my instant noodles. <laughs> and, and I can boil eggs too. She, she tries. I don't know if it looks pretty heavy duty. It's probably industrial quality. I bet you could cook anything with this. Anyway, let's have a look inside. Damn, I knew it. It's locked. Oh, that's the grill? Okay, well then. Nope. You see the metal grate on top of the grill? They make it like that so that the fat and juices can drip off of the meat while it cooks. Guess I'll put this meat on the grill. Hey, what are you doing? What are you going to do if the paper burns? Come on, it'll be fine. I mean, it's not like it's going to burn right away, right? Just got to keep an eye on it and the paper will be fine. Well, they can argue all they want. I'm going to keep an eye on this pork. Cool. Looks like it's about time. I'm going to try taking the paper out. Jumpy, be careful. Sweet of her to care. But I know what I'm... Ouch! See? <laughs> I told you. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Hurry up and take the paper out. It's not coming out. This thing's frozen stiff. I can't get it out. So are we going to have to cut the meat? Yeah, it looks that way. Alright, now that I've sharpened the knife... Yes, I cut the pork. Awesome, Junpei. Now we can get... No, blah, cut out the paper. C plus 10 minus F? C plus 10 minus F? Do you think it's some kind of code? Damn it, they're just screwing around. Junpei, do you know what C and F stands for? You think? Mm, maybe it means corporate finance? I thought it was clever and funny. Are we doing hexadecimal? <clears throat> um, because in hex, A is 10. So, A. 
B, C, 12 plus 10, D, E, F. So 12 plus 10 is 22, minus 15 is 7. Let's give it a shot. This is probably what you're supposed to use to enter the password. If we put in the right number, it'll open the oven door. Jinpei, maybe the note you found earlier. Yeah, I know. Do you know how to enter those numbers? Think E is for enter and C is for clearing. So basically, when I'm ready to submit my answer, I press E. So if I screw up, I just press C, right? Lotus nodded. All right, let's give it a shot. Oh, wrong. God dang it. I, I, I pressed back instead of enter. Yeah, C plus N plus uh, are any letters on the input device. Maybe we can find a way to convert letters to numbers. Oh yeah, the voucher we found next to the plates had some letters on it, didn't it? Why did we not pick up the freaking voucher then? Voucher at the end of the counter. But it doesn't match the number of plates on the table. It says appetizer 9, meat dish 10. Oh. Appetizer 9, meat dish 10, soup A. But where does the C come in? And the plates on the table are 9 appetizer. 16 meat, 10 soup, 15 seafood. Maybe they're using hexadecimal here. I called it. And hexadecimal is... It's a number system that goes 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10, 11. You're familiar with base 10, right? That's the normal system of numbers. The base 10 equivalents for hexadecimal numbers would go like this. A equals 10, B equals 11, C equals 12, D equals 13, E equals 14, F equals 15, and 10 equals 16. 10 becomes 16 in base 10. I know it sounds strange, but you can think of it as just six letters added on to the normal number system after nine. A equals 10, B equals 11, C equals 12, D equals 13, E equals 14, F equals 15, 10 equals 16, and so on. Oh, so that's not a 10 that I'm adding, it's a 16, okay. I think I get it. Oh, C plus 10 plus F, I was reading that as a minus. Okay, so that would be 12 plus 16 is 28, plus 15, 43. Okay. Oh my god, I know how to enter the numbers, please. There we go. Sounds like metal is falling. Well, I guess that went well. Yeah! The door opened. Good job, Jumpy. And there's the Mr. Saturn keycard. Oh no, that's the door we came in. All right. So this is the door we go out. Yes, I think it's unlocked now. You did it, Jumpy. Let's get out of here. Yes, let's go. Not bad. Not bad. 
And with that, we converge back into uh, the like little fork in the thing. There is going to be some uh, story that we deal with and then like some parts that we can fast forward through it. You'll, you'll see what, what I mean next time. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. See you next time for some more Let's Play. Nine hours, nine persons, nine doors, one familiar hallway. Goodbye.